Okay, so let's talk about electron configuration. Um, I've, I've debated how to do this video because it, the, the problem is I don't have enough room to, to do both a, a diagram here for you and do it um, and write it out. Um, well, I could do that, but I'd have to go back and forth between screens here and it's just going to get confusing. Um, so if, if you have a diagram in front of you, if you can find it in a book or you can find it on the internet, um, and you could you could print it off and hold it in front of you and refer to that um, you know whatever works for you um, but I think going back and forth is just gonna get confusing here and I want to try to keep it as simple as I can so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna write this out um, if you're more of a visual learner this video might not be for you um, I'll uh, I'll try to make another one that will be more um, that will be more of a diagram um, more of a picture but um, like I said this one is just gonna I'm just going to write out uh, the shell numbers, and it's just going to be numbers and letters in this one. So uh, if you have a book to refer to, then do that. But Okay, so if you look at your periodic table, um, starting with hydrogen, um, as you probably know, the periodic table has periods and groups. Periods run horizontally. The groups run vertically, starting with um, hydrogen and going across, that is period number one. Uh, then you go down to lithium, that's period number two. Going down to um, sodium, that's period number three. And then down to potassium, and that's period number four. And you go all the way over to krypton, and that's the end of period number four. And that is as far as we're going to go with this. We're not going to go um, any farther than that. Um, yeah, certainly you can do electron configurations past that, um, but for our example, we're, we're only going to do the first four shells. Okay, so let's start with that. Um, oops, I still have my, my line tool here. Let's get a brush out. Okay, so we have, we have our shell number, and like I said, we're going to do one, two, three, and four. Okay, now within each shell we have a subshell. A subshell. And the number of subshells in each shell is just, well, I should say the number of subshells is the number of the shell. So uh, subshell number one has one subshell. Subshell number two has two subshells. Subshell number three has three. Subshell number four has four. So, um, subshell number one has one subshell, and that's called the S subshell. And then um, it goes SP. Now, to show you these, um, like I said, maybe I will make a, a second video here, and I'll do a do a diagram and then I can show you on the periodic table. Um, if you're not familiar, the periodic table is broken down into the S block, the P block, the D block, and the F block. And and that's where these these letters are coming from. Well, that's where these letters are coming from. Um, so maybe I'll show you that in a different video. Okay, so we have S, P, and D in the third shell. Then we have S, P, D, F. So, so far we have shells, and then we have subshells, and then, to make things more confusing, within each subshell we have orbitals. Okay, um, the number of orbitals is pretty simple to remember. It is just the odd numbers, uh, 1, 3, 5, and 7. So, in shell number 1, subshell S, we have 1, orbital. In shell number two, subshell S, we have one orbital. Shell number two, subshell P, we have three orbitals. Then we have one, three, five, one, three, five, and seven. Okay. Now, um, there are two electrons. Two electrons per orbital. I remember my very first chem class I took in college, um, I had, well, I think I took a, a semester of chemistry in high school, but um, I, I hadn't taken a lot of chemistry, so uh, this was, chemistry was pretty new to me, and um, 
and I remember that the chem book that I had didn't explain this, and when I was trying to learn electron configurations, um, I, I couldn't figure this out, and it, it took me a couple of days, and then I figured, I realized there was a pattern here, and I'm like, hmm, well, I guess there's two electrons per orbital, but, you know, if the book had just told me that, or if my, my instructor, my professor would have told me that, I probably would have been a little little more helpful. But so that's why I'm telling you this. Know that in each orbital there are two electrons. So uh, if we just multiply everything here by two, okay, so you get the idea, dot, 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 um, that is the number of electrons. So um, we get two here, and then we have two and six, and then we have two, six, and ten, then we have two, 6, 10, and 14. So if we want to find out the total number of electrons, let's use a nice pink color here, uh, total, total number of electrons per shell, we can do this. Um, we just add these up. Add these together. So here we have two. Shell number one, we have two electrons. That's the maximum number we can have. In shell number two, we have eight electrons. Shell number three, we have 18 electrons. And shell number four, we have, uh, yep, 32 electrons. So that's, uh, that is at least the, uh, what should I say, numerical form of it, I guess. Like I said, uh, maybe I'll draw this out visually for you and make a second video. Um, but it, it's good to, to start with this. I like doing it this way. It, it makes sense in my brain if I can write this out this way. Um, I am actually more of a, a graphic or a picture type learner. Um, I, I learn well with visuals, but um, this this really works well for me. So. So hopefully it does for you too. Um, as always, any questions, um, you know, leave me a comment or uh, or shoot me an email, and I I will get back to you.